Your patience is rewarded. A merfolk born decades before the return of the Eldrazi on the plane of Zendikar would travel the multiverse in an attempt to seek out ways to increase her control and influence over the seas and the creatures that lived within it. This is the exploration of Kiora. Kiora would explore the seas of Zendikar with her younger sister Turi. The two would one day adventure too far out into dangerous depths. A serpent cruised up out of the darkness and attempted to swallow them both whole. Kiora darted out in front of the sea serpent to draw its attention and yelled for her sister to swim hard without looking back. Turi started leaving, but couldn't resist turning back one last time. Kiora promised to always return home before being devoured by the sea serpent. The panic Kiora experienced was enough to ignite her planeswalker spark, sending her into the unknown. Kiora venerates the huge monsters of the seas, krakens, leviathans, and other denizens of the inky depths, and would seek them out as ultimate protection for her home, as she believed these monsters already embodied the ability to withstand persistent forces, time, water, predation, and darkness. Kiora's worst fears would come to fruition as the Eldrazi would once again begin to roam free on Zendikar. Kiora fled Zendikar seeking some way to raise enough power using the inhabitants of the oceans to defeat the Eldrazi. Kiora would eventually travel to the shores of Theros, immediately calling an enormous tsunami towards her in an attempt to attract the attention of deep dwelling creatures. The tsunami struck the polis of Miletus and caused untold destruction. Kiora was not worried about the devastation, she only cared if her beacon had been answered. Kiora failed to attract Krakens and Leviathans, but she attracted the Tritons, the merfolk of Theros. The Tritons believed Kiora to be an avatar of the sea god Thassa. Kiora enjoyed the attention, letting the merfolk continue to believe she was Thassa's avatar. Kiora began borrowing identities from local Theros legends to amass power. One facade she adopted was that of Caliph. Caliph was the most skilled mariner to ever sail the seas. She was also the first mortal to decipher the secret patterns of the winds, thus provoking Thassa's ire. She sailed over the edge of the world and into Nyx to claim her place among the stars. This lie would eventually cause Kiora to cross paths with the Johnny and Elspeth. The pair was actively seeking out Caliph for her skills, trusting her ability would bring them to the Temple of Mystery and the ancient tree at the edge of the world. Kiora agreed to help the two navigate the seas, but for reasons she kept hidden. The group traveled the vast ocean, and Kiora eventually let the truth slip out. Kiora was in search of her own prize hidden within the sea, what appeared to be a sunken city known as Eryxmethes, that in truth was no city at all, but a massive kraken slumbering, camouflaged by a city built upon it. The Drywalkers were now free to continue their journey. They had used Kiora to reach the Temple of Mystery, and Kiora had used them to successfully travel to Eryxmethes. Thassa appeared in one of her many forms, but was distracted by her anger for Elspeth. Kiora took that time to dive deep within the water and discover Thassa's secret seas. She called out to the slumbering beasts of the depths and awoke them from their slumber. Their movement had caused Eryxmethes to submerge itself deep within the water. Kiora knew before she could retrieve it, she must first deal with Thassa. The Drywalkers, Ajani and Elspeth, had convinced Thassa to assist them, sending them and the ship known as Monsoon skyward. Thassa would then appear over Kiora in her triton form. The two fought viciously with their own armies of sea monsters. Kiora would eventually become outnumbered by Thassa's tritons and Eryxmethes. Kiora would become helpless and pinned against the rock by Thassa's bident. But before Thassa could finish Kiora, Kiora would planeswalk away, firmly clutching the god's own bident, taking it with her to the space above space. Kiora would return to Zendikar to recover, the once vibrant beaches and seas replaced with ash and lifelessness. Kiora, now empowered with Thassa's bident, began conquering the Eldrazi of Ulamog's lineage. Kiora, teamed with a couple of Cozy's tricksters, began to assemble an army of merfolk and sea monsters to defeat the Eldrazi invasion. When Gideon Jorah began the liberation of the Seagate, Kiora arrived with her reinforcements, bolstering their lines and helping drive the Eldrazi back. Kiora would reveal she was a planeswalker to Gideon. The two teamed up fighting valiantly for two more days, eventually retaking the Seagate. 
Gideon then called a meeting with his advisors and commanders of allied forces, the human Tazri, the Kormunda, the vampire Drana, and the elf planeswalker Nyssa. Kiora was invited to the briefing as well, but minutes later, Jory N would approach them with a spine-chilling message. Ulamog was approaching. The group weighed their options. Kiora suggested that evacuation was not an option, winning over the admiration of Drana, and eventually convincing Gideon to command his army to stay and fight. The team enacted their new strategy. Nyssa would raise hedrons previously sunken into the earth and form them into a ring around Ulamog. Jace activated the hedron's magic, and the destructive titan Ulamog was now trapped. The cheers of the army slowly turned into concerned murmuring as a black-winged creature paused above the Hedron prison. Energy drained from the Hedrons empowered the figure, the demon planeswalker, Obnixilus. The Hedrons began to fall apart and fall into the ocean below. The Titan, no longer imprisoned, grasped at fleeing humans who turned instantly into dust. Obnixilus's true intentions became clear. He not only freed Ulamog, but another horrific divinity of the Blind Eternities emerged from the ground below. Kozilek had entered the battle. Kiora dove into the waters of Zendikar to summon the mighty power of the cozy tricksters and sea monsters. Kiora, now with the bident of a god, called out to a monster of epic proportions. And this monster answered back. Kiora had summoned Lorthos. It was not long before Kozilek was able to kill the great octopus of Marasa, splitting Lorthos in two. Kiora would be found with a broken leg, her stolen bident now missing. In search of her bident, Kiora and Jory battled Kozilek's goblin dark dwellers and reclaimed the artifact. The Gatewatch, now unable to trap the Titans, created a new plan. Nyssa showed the planeswalkers the ley lines of Zendikar. The new strategy would be to pull the titans in and use the ley lines to drain their essence into Zendikar, letting the plane itself devour them. The plan appeared to be working. The titans were now anchored into Zendikar, however their destructive essence threatened to assimilate Zendikar into themselves. Concerned about her home plane, Kiora tried to persuade Nyssa to release the titans and allow them to flee. Kiora attempted to hurl the entire sea at Nyssa to break her spell, but the sea was divided in two by Jace. Chandra and Nyssa connected, channeling the magic of the ley lines directly into the titans. In a brilliant blaze of flame, Ulamog and Kozilek were incinerated and destroyed, leaving only ashes raining from the sky. Recognizing she had failed the team at the last moment, Kiora walked away on her own. Kiora would eventually reunite with the team during the events of War of the Spark. A comedic moment broke the tension of the war when Dak Faden managed to touch Kiora's Bident in hopes he would be able to copy the Divine Artifact's powers, only to be caught by Kiora. Kiora stayed on Ravnica to fight against the Dread Horde army, but she declined to visit Theros to pay respect to Gideon, feeling she was not welcome. Kiora opted to return to her home on Zendikar. And that currently concludes the lore of Kiora as of 2020. Sadly, we did not see Kiora in the most recent Zendikar set. Perhaps she was too busy exploring the depths of multiple planes, amassing a new army of sea monsters to take on future MTG threats. This has been an exploration of Kiora.